Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I really couldn't think about anything to talk about today because like last week I couldn't be bothered with full makeup. Like, I can't really do another houseplant tour because we only got like the one house. So um, you just got me with very hastily applied eyeliner. So I'm really sorry if I look like a troll, but that is, it's too, it's too, it's too hot. Uh, so I didn't know what I was going to write and then somebody left a comment on another video asking about getting um, splits in monstera leaves so I was like I'll just do that. Um, so that is what we are discussing today. So I don't have a monstera deliciosa in my house so we've got an Adansonii. Because the same rules apply like Adansonii are easier like they tend to grow with holes in fairly easily. It's only in like really low light that you won't get fenestrated ones. So yeah the easy answer uh, if your monstera doesn't have splits in the leaves, the easy answer is give it more light. Um, the uh, the only, the other thing is age. Like they, so monstera don't grow splits in the leaves for the heck of it. They grow them to add stability and to like it allows the wind to travel through the holes and like knock knock the plant down and um, it allows light down to the lower leaves. So if your plant doesn't have many leaves it will grow them without holes in because yeah there's more leaf area to photosynthesize so it's better for the plant so they only grow the splits when it's necessary they don't grow it for fun so if you want it to grow the splits you need to give it enough light for it to think that it needs the splits to allow the lower leaves to thrive if that makes any sense one tip is to grow your plant up something. This is like one of those coir moss pole things. Um, like structurally they're fine. Like they work. You can. Um, this is just tied on with like pipe cleaners, and that they're fine. The roots won't attach. The aerial roots won't attach to the moss pole uh, unless you keep it constantly damp. And even then, if it dries out, they'll just detach. So I, like, I wouldn't go to the effort of dampening the moss pole. If I wanted it to attach, then I would grow it up like a plank of wood or something that it would actually attach to. It needs to be something stable and solid so it will attach to it. This, it, it won't. I mean, it, it might, but it's highly unlikely. Some plants will grow the splits just if you grow them up because they think that if they grow tall enough, you know, plants don't have a concept of a ceiling they assume the sun is up so if you grow the plant up it will grow fenestrations hopefully others will you know you need to increase the light if you grow your monstera somewhere that's dark it may never grow fenestrations it might just grow really leggy and then it wouldn't need the fenest it just doesn't need them so why bother uh, there's also some there's a little bit of a oh, it's the whole borsigiana versus like large form small form Monstera deliciosa. There's various different types and they have different levels of fenestrations. As far as I'm aware, they all have the capability of growing not only the splits in the leaves but also the holes. But it's only the large form that can do like double rows of the holes. But again, there's some people that say, oh no, there's just the one form, it's just um like a more mature. So I don't I don't know. If you don't want to wait for the holes to grow, if it's you know, if you buy a young one and you can't be bothered, you can get cuttings of the large form monstera. But if you don't give it enough light, it will revert to not having holes in the leaves. Monstera can take a lot of light. Like if you, you could keep a monstera quite happily in a south facing window in direct light and it would probably be okay. You might get a bit of burning, but it would be okay and it would grow bigger leaves. So I have this Adansonii in a west facing window, but it's also lived quite far away from an east facing window. In, I would say medium light and it's grown okay like it's not amazing but the leaves like the leaves are like fairly fenestrated it it's fine the Monstera deliciosa are a bit more picky and they so you might get a fenestrated leaf and then uh, the next leaf won't be they can they sort of throw out whatever they fancy and you might get a leaf that's half fenestrated and half not. There is really no way you're judging it. One thing you can do uh, that I recommend but also like be careful is put your plants outside. Obviously there is a ton of light outside compared to inside and I live in the UK and my plant has been outside overnight without being acclimatised since the start of May 
I think. And I won't lie, like it's burnt to a crisp. It looks like crap. But now, so this is like two months later, the new growth is starting to come in really quick and um, it's, the leaves are massive and they're fenestrated. But I basically had to sacrifice all the old growth. I have a golden pothos out there that's looking really sorry for itself. But the growth is starting to come in. If you don't want to risk that, well, there is always an element of risk, but you can um, just take your plant out for a couple of hours every day. Not, I would put it out in the morning when the sun isn't as harsh. It's surprising how much brighter outside is compared to inside, even if it doesn't seem it. Like, even if you put your plant in the shade, it can be a lot more light than even a bright spot inside. So that is something to bear in mind. If you ever see photos of Monstera growing in the wild, you will notice they do have a lot, like the really big ones too, tend to have a few like brown crispy tips. Leaves are so big because they're getting so much light, but because they're getting so much light, they burn. So I'm not saying it's not possible to have one without the other, but there is certainly the risk that you will end up with a burnt plant. You can chop it off, but you'll still get like um, an edge of brown where the plant tries to heal itself. So just be aware. So I would say if you do want fenestrated leaves and you have got outside space, I would definitely try putting your plant outside for a couple of hours every day. I'm just not, for, for one, I wanted to experiment. I wanted to see how my plant would do if, uh, there's actually, there's two Monstera, Golden Pothos, and there is a Philodendron Narrow all out there. And, oh, and a Thumbmasophyllum, the Philodendron Saloon, that one. The one that always has thrips. That's outside because it always has thrips. Uh, but I just wanted to see how they would do if I just left them out there. And it's taken a while and the old growth does look like crap, but the new growth is starting to come in and I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. We'll just have to see. Yeah, so the so yeah, if you if you want splits in your Monstera, the things that will really make a difference are age. As I said, they tend to... It depends on how fast they grow and how fast they grow depends on how much light you give them and how good your general care is. But... You're looking to get fenestrations after about a year. They're about a year old. But it, as I say, it varies a lot. But the light is the thing that will really make the difference. Apart from those two things, the only thing you can really do to encourage fenestration is to just look after the plant well. Um, so keep it well fed. Keep it wa well watered. Don't overwater it. I, I personally think Monstera do well if you let them dry out quite a lot. That's what I've found. Uh, and you want humidity to be around 60%. I have found with Monstera, if it's too humid, they can get moisture trapped in the leaves and they can end up with like weird brown marks or just even just rotting altogether. So just be careful with the humidity. I wouldn't encourage misting for this reason. I, I don't mist my plants. I do sometimes squirt them with a spray bottle just to get bugs off but with Monstera I prefer to use a lint roller. I don't, I don't know. I, I like using a lint roller because it's easy and they've got big leaves so it's easy to do but um, yeah I do like a lint roller for Monstera. Monstera anthuriums and rubber plants. I tend to go over them quite often with a lint roller, gets the dust off and can remove any thrips that are sort of brewing and there's always thrips brewing on Monstera. They, they just love them. So yeah, you can go down the grow light route. The problem with Monstera is that they're huge and grow lights, like they work fine on bigger plants, but to be really effective, you need a lot, like you need to cover a lot of area. So I tend to use grow lights for my smaller plants. My big, and my bigger plants go near the window. Uh, somebody asked me if aerial roots have anything to do with the, fenestra with the fenestrations on Monstera. Not as far as I'm aware, so. I know people that have got massive monstera and they cut the aerial roots off just because they attach to like your paintwork and stuff and they really think they can damage it. Only cosmetically, they won't like pull your house down or anything, but yeah, and it doesn't seem to affect them. Uh, as long as your monstera is so stable, it will grow big leaves. They actually, uh, I've found anyway, if you leave them outside, they will prefer to vine across the ground because they know the ground's stable. If there's enough light, like if they're not growing in a rain, they're not growing in a rainforest here. They're growing in a garden, so they are quite happy to just sort of grow horizontally rather than upwards. I try not to let them do that because it's fine when they're outside, but when they're inside, they take up a lot of room. 
Uh, but in general, yeah, if you're the kind of person that wants to cut off aerial roots, that shouldn't affect the leaves. That I'm aware of. I leave the aerial roots. Um, I've found they just tend... My next door neighbour singing. I've found they just tend to dry up. They're a little bit... I don't have any growing on here. I have like a few little nubs. There's a little nub there. But... Um, Oh, there is a few growing here actually. Interesting. The biggest difference I found with uh, Monstera adansonii and Deliciosa when it comes to growing them is these. I don't know if it's just uh, if it's all of them or specifically this one gets hungry really quickly. So I fertilize it more often than my other plants. My Monstera Deliciosa never seems to be that bothered. You can, you can tell when they need fertilising because they go really like, the word's chlorotic, but they go like yellow. So if you notice multiple leaves going yellow and you don't think you're overwatering, give it a feed. The When they go like bright yellow, that tends to be a sign that they're dying. It's just like the natural life cycle and it's sort of autumnal colours. But when they go like a sickly looking yellow, it's probably a feeding issue. It actually looks really similar to thrip damage, if you know what thrip damage looks like. Like, almost like somebody's got an eraser and rubbed the colour off. That is what that looks like, is this one. You're just not hungry, are you? Another thing I want to, wanted to cover, this is something that somebody asked me and I never, I just never thought about it. It's not a stupid question or anything, I just never considered it. So once the leaf has formed, the leaf has formed, it won't grow fenestrations. They won't grow after it's unfurled. They won't, you know, it's... Once you see the leaf, that is how it looks. It won't, it will grow, but it won't become any more fenestrated. What you see is what you get. I don't think there's anything you can do other than give a plant a ton of light that will cause it to grow fenestrated. If you train it up something really sturdy, it might, you might convince it. It really depends on the individual specimen, but giving a ton, ton of light is definitely the, the best way to encourage fenestration. Uh, but it still will take a few leaves for those fenestrations to really develop. So you might get a couple of splits and then you might get splits on both sides. Then you might get splits and a couple of holes. Then you might go back to no holes. There's a lot of sort of back and forth. I know this was a bit rambly. I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, because uh, <laughs> basically the answer to the question, like how can I get my plant my monstera to develop splits is give it more light but that would have been like a 20 second video so i rambled on about crap so i hope that was helpful or useful or you know and um i don't know if if you're aware of this but there are other plants that also develop fenestrations so uh, monstera dubai do if you have one hanging around they they grow shingly and then when they get big they get holes in them um golden poppers if you give them a ton of light i know i've not seen it in a house plant in england but uh golden poppers grow massive and they get fenestrations as they get older i have i've sort of seen people having the same um large form small form argument about golden poppers as to do with monstera so i don't know and i've seen like gold, regular golden poppers and then hawaiian ones and i don't know if I could. I don't know if it's possible for me to grow my golden poppers like with big massive leaves and fenestrations, but that's why it's outside so we can see. But yeah, the, it's not just monstera that grow the fenestrations. Um, but with house plants, a lot of the times we don't have the conditions to grow them to their mature size, or sometimes we just don't hang on to them long enough. We don't keep them alive long enough. Right. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.